Today we're going to be talking about muscles of the face and to some degree muscles of the neck. So let's begin with this muscle of the forehead. This is referred to as the epicranius muscle. And this is also called the occipital frontalis muscle because there is the insertion at the frontal region of the skull and the occipital region of the skull would be the origin. Um, between the belly, which is the frontal belly, and the occipital belly is this large white sheet sheath, which we refer to as a uh, aponeurosis. So an aponeurosis is a tendinous connection between two muscle bellies. And indeed we see this uh, quite well here. So that's the gallia aponeurosis of the occipital frontalis muscle, or epicranius. The purpose of this muscle is to raise your eyebrows, and so it wrinkles your forehead, huh? Wrinkles the forehead. Let's take a look at another muscle here on the side. This is the temporalis muscle. The temporalis muscle has its origin in the temporal fossa, right below the temporal lines. And it comes down to attach to the coronoid process of the mandible. This is a chewing muscle. So when you open and close your jaw, this is the muscle that you're using, particularly for closing your jaw. The one that actually uh, is the most dynamic for that, though, is this large chewing muscle called the masseter. The origin of the masseter is the zygomatic arch, and the insertion is the angle of the mandible. Again, this muscle is used for chewing, and particularly for closing the jaw. All right, now if we take a look here at this general region of the forehead, we see a couple of regions where muscles would appear that we don't actually see, and I'll just name them for you right now since all the books talk about them. One is this one called the procerus muscle. The procerus muscle helps you make this nice crease in your forehead here, just above the nasal bone, right there. And there's another one called the corrugator, sort of going in the glabella region, and that helps you again sort of wrinkle your forehead to some degree and when you're looking sternly. So if this is the mean dude, then the corrugator would be the meaner dude as you kind of make a little furrow in your forehead, and then if you're really looking mean, then it would be the procerus, the meanest dude muscle. Let's take a look at some round muscles now. These are the orbicularis oculi muscle and the orbicularis oris muscle. The term orbicularis refers to the fact that the muscle fibers are running in a circle in both of these muscles. Um, this particular one um, is going to help to close the eye. So this is a winking muscle, so to speak, right? So it actually helps to close the eye, the winking muscle. And then this one is going to be for uh, making the letter O, when you say O, or even if you say orbicularis oris, you're using this muscle twice. So some people call this a kissing muscle. I'll show you a better kissing muscle in just a moment. All right, well, let's go back to this particular region here, and you can appreciate how there's some muscle fibers that go here, they go down here, they go down here. There's actually three muscles here, and they all basically connect to the corner of the mouth right here. Not the very corner, but just, up, just above the corner of the mouth right here. This one is Elvis Presley's muscle. So you can appreciate the way Elvis Presley looked. He had his lip raised slightly. And that's because this particular group was pretty active in him. Uh, and it is called the levator labii superioris. Levator referring to lifting, labii referring to the lip, and superioris, it means it's upper. We're actually going to have an inferioris one as well that we'll see fairly soon. Um, now let's take a look here at this muscle and this muscle. These are zygomaticus muscles. This is zygomaticus major, zygomaticus minor. The origin of the zygomaticus muscle is the zygomatic bone. The insertion, especially of zygomaticus major, is the corner of the mouth. So when this muscle contracts, the mouth, the corners of the mouth go up, and this is the smiling muscle. Deep to the zygomaticus muscles are um, the buccinator muscles, and so there's one on each side. 
um, one on the right side of the skull, one on the left side of the skull. So we're looking at just one right here. And the buccinator muscle is the big pucker muscle. Uh, this one actually helps you pucker as if you were eating a sour lemon. It's a deep muscle, again, to the zygomatic muscles. It's also deep to this muscle that runs sideways like this, transversely, and that is the rhizorius muscle. The rhizorius muscle goes to the very corner of the mouth and comes back to the fascia of the uh, masseter muscle where it meets its origin. In effect, this widens the mouth then when it contracts, so it helps to widen the mouth. Now, if you come over here, we've done some smiling, right, with the zygomaticus muscles. Now let's do some frowning. This particular one is depressor anguli oris. You can appreciate how it too is in the corner of the mouth. It's going to bring the corner of the mouth downward. So this is a frowning muscle. Another frowning muscle is this one next door, which is depressor labii inferioris. You can appreciate how that's the opposite of the muscle group that we talked about here, Albus Presley's group. This is levator labii superioris. This is depressor labii inferioris. Again, this one is going to help bring the mouth down. It's going to be a frowning or pouting muscle. And then finally, as this set of three, is the mentalis muscle. The mentalis is, of course, in the chin region. It's going to help to protrude the lower lip. It's also going to help to wrinkle the skin of the chin. So the three muscles in this general group then are depressor anguli oris, depressor labii inferioris, and the mentalis muscle. So three separate frowning muscles. Okay, let's take a look at this wonderful neck muscle. This is the sternocleidomastoid muscle. And this muscle is going to insert in the mastoid process. It's going to originate at the sternum and the clavicle, hence the name sternoclido for the origin, mastoid for the insertion. And notice when you have muscles that have the origin and insertion in the same name, um, the origin comes first and the insertion comes second. So sternoclidomastoid, right? Good, excellent. This one helps to tilt the neck from side to side, or should say maybe tilt the head from side to side because your head is on your neck, clearly. And so it's flexion, if you will, of the uh, head. And um, it also is innervated by the um, accessory nerve. 